ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, our After Refugees podcast. Ted here, John here, coming at you, coming at you hot, off season edition. Well, not not typically MLS off season, but DC United Spirit off season. Pretty much all last, the off season. Last time live for the year 2021. Uh, that's something. And also, yeah. I'm going to steal your thunder, Ted, because I'm so excited about it. This is episode number 200. Number 200. Number 200. And Do- I bet you there are some episodes that we forgot to count. And we probably already passed it, but for the accounting purposes, this is officially number two hundred. This is the official count. It's official count. It's 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 like counting election results. There's always going to be mistakes. It's okay. That's right. We're, we're in the ballpark. We're in the two hundred ballpark, stop, and that's stop okay. the steal of this of the show, everyone. So yeah, uh, we uh, two hundred episodes. I think I saw on the Spotify Wrap the number of minutes we created of content this year. It was like three thousand something. Yeah. And then I thought about how many hours that was, and then I thought I cannot believe that we've done this uh i can't believe that people are listening and i can't believe that we've done this but i, I can't believe uh, we got to 200 episodes i i i think this is i have to go back because i did do a lot with around the league but i'm pretty sure this is the longest i've had a podcast it's always been in like spurts and stops and and life gets in the way and everything like we're that. we're holding on ted yeah. we're we're in this for the long haul <laughs> you and i we're, we're at, we have had we have uh rfk refugee tattoos on our back so we just can't we we can't go back now we're too, yeah we're, we're in too deep uh, but as a way of celebrating that, uh, if you want to give us your Twitch Prime subscription for this month, mm-hmm. that would be great. Uh, or if you just want to keep listening to us and tell your friends that we still have a podcast uh, and that if somehow maybe there's some DC United fans that uh, don't listen to podcasts, uh, maybe you should tell them to do that. I have stickers. I have coasters. <laughs> I have scarves. I have anything. Anything you need to make us a new fan, I'll give you. It makes a good holiday gift. Come on. Holidays are coming. Holidays That's are right. coming. Uh, Promo code uh, supply chain, I believe, is the yes. promo code. If you go to rfkrefugees.com, buy a scarf, 20 bucks shipped. Uh, you can use it for yourself or give it as a gift. And that is the end of our uh, promotion period of this of this 200th episode. Hashtag stop, uh, stop John's basement from looking like a uh, pyramid scheme. <laughs> There's a reason why it's blurred out. Uh, yes. Yeah, so, so how was your weekend, man? What did, what, what did you get into? Oh, man. What, how was my weekend? Uh... Uh, I think it was good. I don't remember. We watched. I watched some MLS. Mm-hmm. Uh, I made some money off some MLS. I, I'm like the rainmaker right now. <laughs> I don't know playoffs. I got to keep. I got. I should have started my betting quarter. I would have. I would have really. I would have really gotten some people some money this week. Yep. Yep. You got you. Uh, it was good, man. I I uh, I dove headfirst into the into the football manager craziness. I'm I'm doing some thinking of some of some content since Twitch is also mainly about video games. Uh, might might be doing uh might be doing some planning some content out. Uh, That's great off season stuff that I don't have to do with. I love it, Ted. This is, <laughs> this is the best. Thing. This will be this will be. I'm thinking in season. I'm I'm not sure like how I want to do it yet or how I want to organize it. I'm trying to learn the game. Uh, and I and I've tried to play football manager in in stops and spurts. I guess I had to become like an older man to really appreciate the game and like they've also made it easier to understand. I remember like some of the 2014 13 and there also are like the problem with that game is it's like information overload and you don't know what you should pay attention to. Thankfully now there are people that do this stuff and they get a lot more subs than me um and they literally break down here's what you care about, here's what you should care about, don't care about this stuff and don't worry about this, set this up this way. And it very much eases you better into the game. So maybe that's what was missing. But uh, I've been diving into that. Uh, I started out and playing as my uh, second division German team, FC Heidenheim, who you might have seen me wear. Wear their jersey on the show. I'm doing a lot better. A lot better with them. there? Yes. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing a lot better <laughs> than they are currently. My, my, their, their striker currently has four goals in the season. And I got four goals out of him in one game. But it's very fun. There you go. Very I blame the manager of the real life one then. Clearly yeah. there's a problem, a motivation problem. <laughs> Apparently he's a legend. Talk. Apparently he's a legend. They interview you. They're like, what, how are you going to replace the legend coach? And I'm like, oh, I don't know. I think he's fine. So anyway, I'm Jesse Marsh. <laughs> <laughs> let's talk. Let's talk. Let's talk MLS. Let's talk MLS. We, the playoffs for this weekend. I'm sure we all I, we all sat down, watch the games, uh, the wonderful ABC broadcast. Perfect. Crystal clear broadcast uh, over there at ABC. Um, John, what do you what the, do you, it was the nice it was the nice Vaseline on the on the <laughs> on the lens situation, Je- right? Yeah, apparently, apparently ABC is investigating the issue, which I, I think someone posted the hot dog suit meme. Of, <laughs> we're all trying to figure out the guy that did this. Uh, it's it's I think it's clear. It seems clear to me that there was a uh, cheapness factor that has been played into it. And I believe one other uh, 
one of the person involved in the media talked about that a little bit. Um, but yeah, man, the uh, the the playoffs. Uh, what what do, like what have you made of these playoffs? Like, have you enjoyed it? Like, it's been weird. It's been uneven. Lot yeah, of- I would say that's the case. I would say that I have enjoyed it. It's been a, a pure MLS playoffs. There have mm-hmm. been not really a, a, gr- a number of classic games. There are lots of circumstances, either with injury or with uh, one half of the team uh, being in COVID protocols mm-hmm. uh, that have sort of influenced the way the games have gone. You know, your golden boot winner getting a yellow card uh, after after scoring a goal to adv- make your team advance. There's a lot of like weird sort of things that are not about the game quality themselves have a, sort of affected playoffs so far. Um, and the fact that the playoff, uh, the MLS Cup final is the Timbers at NY, NYCFC at Timbers is wild. I don't think, uh, I mean, obviously you, you, you would assume higher seeds would move on. New England, you would not. New England, I'm sure, will be talking about the fact that they had a layoff and, and came into that game flat and did not advance. I'm sure that that'll be talked about. NYCFC is doing this with... You know, not a super impressive roster to me anyway. Uh, DC United obviously had a, a calamitous game at Yankee Stadium this year, mm-hmm. which they usually do whenever they go to Yankee Stadium. But I was never really blown away by the roster. If this is just MLS playoffs personified that a team is just sort of like, you know, rolling through it, not being super hot, just like things going their way and just like powering through uh, in any way they have to. Yeah, what do you I, think? I think so. I, I go back to like, I feel like the 2020 and 2019 versions of the playoffs were a lot more enjoyable to watch. And I think there is a part of that that has to do with the fact that the uh, the, the, the the layoff, the two week layoff, I think hurt te- cert- certain teams that were really playing well. Teams like Seattle, uh, teams like New England, of course, who broke the points record. And they had an even longer lay a three week layoff that 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 to me was was a little ridiculous. Um, I, I did not understand why they had to wait so long. Um, I, I I figured there had to be a better way you could organize that. And I it, I won't say it impacted them because I think New England did enough in that game. Um, but I think they started out a little slow, um, but they you know, it's. It's the it's the nature of the playoffs. I think there are a lot of people out there kind of saying like, oh, you know, you have the top seeds out. What does that say about the regular season? I I think the playoffs are a lot better. You need some randomness. You need some fun moments like RSL. Uh, RSL making the run they did was incredible. Bouts of fun. David Ochoa uh, for, forever living in the head. Your favorite player right now. He's my favorite player. I, I listen, I'm a USMNT fan, but there are certain segments of the USMNT fan base that bug me and annoy me. And this dude just is out here living rent free in their heads. Uh, it's great. Uh, it's fan. It's fun to watch. And I love the. I love the. I love the aspect that he brings some entertainment. Uh, the smack a league talk. that needs so much of it. Yeah, it needs personality, and and there's been, I will say, you know, since since Laton has left, uh, there's been a lot of missing uh, missing personality. I think in this league, um, I, I think you know uh, Adrian Heath. As much as I don't like him, he brings some personality. Uh, I this league needs more players that are willing to kind of like you know do some do some. Smack talk. I thought Bill actually was really primed to do that. Uh, and I and he's I, mellowed and in his old age. I think he has, he has, and I and I think uh, was it Achoa was talking about how the the goalkeeping corpse is in the U.S. is very robotic. Like there's a very set specific way to do to do something. And you know, I look at Bill and Bill. You know, Bill called out one of his keepers, says he's better than one of his keepers. I mean, he has sort of bucked that trend in a certain sense. Uh, what did that get him? To? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. But I, I, you know, I, I would love to see him come up and start maybe talking, talking a little bit, uh, whether it's to the, whether it's to the, uh, to, to the Mexican national team, to the Red Bulls, whatever, man, he does it. Uh, he, he certainly brings the, he certainly brings the energy. That's for sure. Who's, who's our pick for the, who's our pick for the winner? I, I think it's going to be Portland. Um, I, I just I, I think they are at home. They've done very well at home. Um, I, I think I think New York got extremely lucky. And we didn't talk about this, the COVID issue. Uh, 11 players from Philadelphia. If you watch that game, uh, Philly had the better, in my opinion, had the better of play. Uh, the game really, NYC kind of woke up and they played down to Philly because they didn't really get going until Philly got that first goal. And they're like, oh, yeah. We have to play soccer now, and and they they were a much more skilled team than what was out there in Philly, and they showed it on that goal and how quickly they got that goal back. Um, but I mean, I really do think you know it was a it was a, a mistake from the uh, 
from the Philadelphia Defender. I didn't recognize him, so I think he was one of the replacements. Uh, you had you, anytime you're bringing on uh, Colin, who I'm pretty sure most people were like, "Wait a minute, he still plays? He's what not year retired." Is it? is it 2013? What year is it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, he did well, though. He did well, um, t- to be honest. In most cases, um, but you know, hey, uh, I, I think at this point, I think we've seen NYCFC the way they played down to Philly. The way they barely just got out of there when they really it really should not have been as close as it was in my opinion with the with the talent the talent level out there I think Portland's got this uh, kind of wrapped up so that's my I pick. will agree with you and that is where I will put my money uh, in Fanduel this week uh, I will I will say I was very proud of the fact that I I speedily uh, because I don't think the Fanduel odds makers are you know following MLS Twitter very closely. And as soon as that as soon as that uh, that announcement dropped about the ten players, I'm like, quickly throw all the money I have <laughs> and make out at New York City. Uh, and the odds didn't change for like another two hours, and then they changed big. So yeah, thank you New York City, thank you RSL, thank you Portland. I've I'm just on a streak, so we're gonna go Portland in the final, uh, probably straight. I don't think I'm gonna do anything wacky with that, but yeah, uh, I, I'm excited. I'm excited to watch the game. I'm all more excited for the season to get over and the off season to kick off in full. Yeah, that's my that's my most exciting thing about uh, about it's, this time of year. It, it has been a bit of a, a bit of a marathon. It, what DC finish? It feels like almost like three months ago. Pretty even much. though even though it was like end of I think it was like uh, end of November, or beginning of November. I think. I mean, it's been a did month. The, did, did the training facility open after the season ended or before? It, it, it opened before. Went. It was like before. I think it was right as the season was ending. They they had the training facility open. So. Um, um, they're they're still using like I know I saw Steve Birnbaum was working out there in the off season so that's mm-hmm. I'm, I'm I I really it was when the season starts up again I am going to be when we start doing our thousand interviews that we usually do in and before the season I will be very excited to see who is uh, who has moved out who has moved out that way with a long term with an eye to a long term uh, you know five days a week shorter commute yeah. Agreed. Uh, we have uh, we have a uh, we have some stories. We have some news. We have some roster Speaking news. Of the off season. Yes, we got some DC roster news uh, coming down the pipeline. Uh, so let's just uh, let's go through let's go through this list. Let's go through who's not uh, who's not coming back for sure. Uh, Eric Sorga on loan right now. Um, go, get that get that VVV Venlo money. Go crazy. <laughs> get that get that half a million to a million probably. We'll um, take it. Yeah, take it full. I think we would only get like four hundred thousand or something of that, and that was, some of that would be in GAM. So hey, if it goes towards some some players, would be interested. Uh, Emil Assad options declined. John Kempen option declined, and Felipe Martins option declined. Uh, so interesting to see. I guess Felipe was maybe a little surprising, uh, but I'm and guessing they're still discussing. They're still discussing a contract with him. Yeah, he is home in Brazil now. Yeah, I think he was out hanging out with Mar- was that I see like Mar- was it Marcelo Saragossa with- or Mark? Correct. Mar- yeah. Saragossa, however, is still like in playing shape. I don't know what he I don't know what he's working at, <laughs> but like like a year ago, there was an Instagram post like it was basically like back on my grind. I'm like, what are you? You're like 42. What are you doing? Why are you mm-hmm. on a grind? Don't be on your grind. Just stay healthy, man. What are you doing? If you want to try it. I guess you should try it. But uh, and of course, Emil Assad sort of told us this was happening by vacating the locker room before the last home game. Yeah. Uh, and otherwise just sort of being totally unavailable. Uh, I would give a dollar to find. I think you and I both suspect it's fitness, but I would be very uh, interested to know if there's any other, like what what exa- what was the final straw that made him unplayable in Ernan's mind? I'm I'm very curious about it. Was it one game? Was there yeah. an appearance that he played where he was just like, nope, that's it, you're done, no more. And, and that uh, was and that was really a shame because I think everybody had kind of highlighted. And we talked about this, Emil being the guy maybe that would fit Hernan's system really well and would really flourish in that system. And it just never worked out um, for whatever reason. Uh, my, my money's on fitness. I think fitness was a big a big reason why uh, he never he never saw the field. It, you know, it seems like everybody buys in. Um, I think this team lacked a direction last season. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think you have a guy, you know, sometimes that guy coming in being like, all right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to do really well. You know, I, I've experienced it in jobs when, when things kind of felt directionless, some guy comes in and says, no, 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 we're going to do this, this, and this, and things are going to get better. And sometimes people jump right on board. Uh, but maybe there's always that guy who's like, ah, f- you know, screw this. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing this for you. Um, and I think that ulti- yeah, <laughs> I think that ultimately happened, uh, for, for you, Emil. So Rob, Rob is already 
posted uh, an article about <laughs> it's time for Yamil to return. It, literally, I saw it. I was like, of course he did. Mm. I think he probably had that in the can already ready to go. That that, uh, that guy so, that guy probably loads up FIFA and then immediately tries to sign oh, Yamil sure. Saad. Actually, Even if he's running like Bayern Munich, he le- probably signs him. Last time I'll talk about football manager, but he's out of contract in my football manager sim, and I actually invited him on a trial. <laughs> Because he was there, and uh, I think then some other clubs scooped him up. So I don't, I don't think it ended up going anywhere. Or I think he wanted also, like too much money or something. Well, that that I can believe that. Yeah. Uh, so in addition to Felipe being under uh, sort of discussion for another contract, so is John Kempen, uh, and I believe that's it. Yeah. Yes, that's it. Uh, other players who are out of contract and are gone, gone, gone for sure. Uh, Ramon Abila is gone mm-hmm. back to Boca Juniors. Uh, Giovanni Bolivar is and his his loan has ended uh, with uh, Deportivo La Guiara in Venezuela, uh, so he's back. He's gone. Also, that means Dar Luis Paz, who was playing for Loudon, uh, also returned. Mm-hmm. I was surprised at that one. I'm not sure what the buy option was. He looked pretty good when he played for Loudon, but that's not a direction they're going now. I think as and we'll talk about that here shortly. Was jo- was Giovanni Bolivar? Was he was he pre Lasada? I think he was right. He got here before. So, like, Lasada really didn't have a say. I think that's what we're seeing a lot in this roster is players, Lasada didn't have a say. And I think they're trying to figure out what, else, you know, maybe get some players that fit his system. Um, yeah. Uh, other other players, Frederick, Bri- Frederick Briant is uh, is gone. Uh, I think we, he's been working on his coaching badges. Uh, he's sort of at the age where you would assume maybe he's done, but uh, who knows? Uh, maybe Maybe he continues. Michael DeShields, a, a draft pick that just didn't pan out. Mm-hmm. I think he played maybe five or six games for Loudon and then went into witness protection and he never played again. Uh, that's, you know, that happens. At the, the draft in the year 2020, that's what you're working I think you looked up uh, sort of who came out of that draft and it, the numbers are not great. It's th- <laughs> th- This may go down as like the worst draft class. And it might be, you know, this is, I, I don't doubt we're still going to get good players. And I think there are some. Some caveats. There was the, you know, a lot some players that maybe would be out in in going out of the draft uh, at this time. Uh, got that extra year of college eligibility. You know, they it's changed in MLS and what they're getting as far as the draft. So I'll be curious to see what we see out of this draft class. I'll be curious. You know, I'm sure in the draft we'll we'll, we'll bring uh, Travis Clark on. So I'll be curious to get his perspective on. You know what happened this year because you know there there was no I have to look this might have been the first year there were no players out of the draft that were up for like young player of the year I think that has to be that has to be the first time um, but yeah not not nothing nothing at all from this draft class thus far maybe that'll change and, there, and there's reasons why obviously mm-hmm. but it's funny to compare the player quality out of the MLS college draft and the NWSL draft <laughs> obviously there are reasons and we could get into all of them but yeah. it's just it's just funny. Um, other uh, closing out the list here, Joseph Mora uh, is, is no longer with the club. I think we've been talking about that one basically since Ernan got here. Just round yeah. peg, square hole. I think I think he's going to land on his feet and play well somewhere because he's still got he's still got it in him. I, he's a good player. I, I could see I could see a team like Charlotte. I could see a team like Austin just looking for some some Charlotte defensive. Would be great to, they would be very lucky to get him. I yeah. think that would be a good pickup if they could do that. Yeah, I, I think if you get into a basic. A, play, a team of basically a, a more non-specialized coach that doesn't want to do a specific style that just doesn't fit. Um, I think if you get a more basic, you know, four, four, two, four, two, three, one with, you know, a wing back that maybe pushes forward a lot, but pretty much stays in a defensive hole. I think l- what we learned from our non system is that he wants wing backs that push forward players like Gressel and players like Paredes flourished because of their ability to go forward. And Mora is, has a certain quality to do that, but he almost, it, it just, I think he needs another like overlapping winger or somebody who's actually going to overlap with him a little bit. Um, and I just don't think he ever had that here. So, and- yeah, I think that's true. And then the last two players, Jordi Reyna, mm-hmm. uh, that one is probably not a surprise for the reason uh, of the cost of his contract, which it's hard to find uh, 7,000 a week, 360. This is in pounds. That's not helpful. <laughs> I don't have the number in front of me, but I know that it was higher than a player of his of his sort of stature. Yeah, I know they're not looking at bringing him back. I, I, what are you do? I, I think Jordi Reyna for me was kind of a litmus test, almost of like what 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 is the what is the first thought? And I'm not saying you know that DC is going to blow away the transfer window, but I'm like what what is the first thought about what DC wants to do in this transfer window? If they brought Jordi Reyna back, that would be an ultimate red flag that this team is. They think things are mostly okay. They're going to kind of stay pat. Maybe they make a couple signings here or there. 
Uh, but you move a guy like Jordi Reyna, and suddenly it's like, okay, that frees up a lot of a lot of cap space. You can go and get, you know, maybe a young money player, maybe somebody you know who could be more who could be more impactful. Uh, so that's kind of what I thought with that move. That was kind of a litmus test, you know. If Jordi Reyna comes back, or if they look to resign him, then I think then I that maybe spelled a little bit of trouble for the off season. But he's he's not coming back, and. Uh, I mean, he he really. Uh, I think he found a renaissance. I think he'll find he'll find another MLS team. I think there'll be another MLS team that would look at what he provided and said, "Hey, let's give him a shot." Because uh, he, he didn't say fit. I think yeah. that's the biggest thing. Ernan is clearing out the dead wood from that he can. Yeah, that's that true. He is, that he is contractually able to do uh, the players who could not stay on the field. Uh, and then Chris Seitz finally moving on. I would imagine this is his last rodeo. We'll see on that front. Junior Moreno got an offer to stay with the team. Uh, another offer. I think that is. Um, I would like to see them keep him. I understand if I, I can see defensive midfield being a place that Aaron would like to put a stamp on the team mm-hmm. from a player selection standpoint. I also see the wisdom in providing a little bit of clearance for Moses Nyman to see the field some more. There was too many bodies in between him and, uh, and the field. Uh, but I, you know, certainly you'd want to replace junior Moreno with a, uh, a tier, a player of his quality, particularly if Felipe is going to walk. So, well, I think you know we'll see what that one develops. Do you have strong feelings about Junior staying with the team? I, I want him back. I, I think it's mm-hmm. I think it's good that they offer they gave him an offer. Um, I, I don't think I, he does a lot of. I think he does a lot of things that won't you know again st- show up on the stat sheet. I, I think he's very underrated as a as a center uh, as a center defensive midfielder. Um, and I think scored a goal this year. Yeah, he did. So there's that. Now he's now he's a threat to score. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because Hernan was like, hey, stop, stop full laces. Just place it. Yeah. Just place it, buddy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you're as soon as he started placing guy. it, oh man, he started generating all these chances. Yep. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I, I think I want him back. It, you know, I, I think they, the, the offer is interesting. I'd be curious to see if he, if he takes it. Um, it, you know, he's still getting minutes for the, um, for the national team. So it certainly hasn't impacted that. Um, or maybe he thinks he can go. He was uh, he was being talked a lot. Uh, he was being talked a lot after the Copa America as being a guy who might move to Europe um, at some point. He showed very well. I think it wasn't the last Copa America, but the one before that. I want to say um, he showed really well for that. And there were there was thought he might he might move on. But uh, we'll we'll see what happens with that. I don't ha- I, I can't read the tea leaves on that either which way. I would not be surprised with either decision. He comes back. I or or he is not no longer here. Yeah, I think I think we both sort of hope he does. And then, excuse me, just uh, other players who uh, had their contracts option exercised. We talked a little bit about these players, about what we thought about Tony Alfaro. Mm -hmm. uh, We'll be back with the team. I think that that was a player you were sort of looking at a possibility to improve that spot. Um, But an option exercise does not necessarily mean too much. They could still always cut him. They could still do a lot of things for next year. Well, I mean, I think I think by getting rid of by cutting Brilliant and keeping. and keeping uh by cutting Brilliant and then keeping um Alfaro, oh. I think that you, you Brilliant took up a lot of salary. I think you can you can cover that salary uh, w- with a player and still. I mean Alfaro, I, he had moments. He looked he yep. he had moments where he was solid, and I think that that's a good piece to to keep as a as a spot starter. Hopefully injuries. And truly, yeah, he looked better when he had a run in the team. Mm-hmm. So and he got he got I think he got a hamstring injury and that knocked him out. And then whenever he sort of plugged in, he didn't look as good. It was just it was that be, that magical beginning of the year. Speaking of magical beginning of the year, Adrian Perez also back with the team. Yep. A, uh, I think that was a no brainer just from a cost for uh, you know value to the team. He's, he'll be back. Uh, Andy Nahar back with the team. Not however signed to a long term contract. Not however signed to any sort of increase on his salary right now. Just as a a contract ex- option picked up. Well, I th- as far as we know. I'm, I'm I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure with with regards to Andy Nahara, I think he gets a little bit of a bump um, in salary when he uh, um, <clears throat> he gets a little bit of a bump when he um, when he uh, when when he resigns. So yeah, I think he got a little bit of a contract. I'd be curious to see if they if they offer him more. Um, sure. I think he would be pushing 29 with 30. Would be I think it's a two year option if I remember correctly. I don't know. I don't know. Or I, I don't think you. I don't think you moneyball this guy yeah. personally. I think. I think you want to keep him happy. Uh, Donovan Pines uh, option extend <laughs> option exercise no brainer. Good for Donovan to be back. Kamarni Smith. That was an interesting one. I think Kamarni uh, did not. Fe- he featured well in preseason. He was a non factor at Loudon for the most part. Not a winger and was forced to play there often to accommodate uh, uh, Giovanni Bolivar. 
So obviously, I think Ernan likes what he saw in preseason. Thought maybe we'll, we'll see what we'll see how we go. So he's back, and Drew Skendrich. Uh, so both players players that came out of nowhere, Tony Alfaro, Drew Skendrich, and Adrian Perez all uh, played well enough to get a contract for the next year. So that's that's great news for them. Lots of lots of twenty two players under contract. Lots of uh, room for additions. Yep. Lots of lots of chances, and it, it, we'll see what happens. They already signed. They already have a player uh, a signing right. from Sal Sumake from Loud United, uh, from the uh, signed from an uh, Ivory Coast uh, the Premier League team. I don't know the name of that one in front of me, uh, but he is he's play. You know, I think what they're envisioning him is a sort of left wing back type of player, mm-hmm. uh, defensive player, left sided player. So that'll be good for a coverage perspective, no matter what. I know that he had trained with the club frequently. I still believe there's one more Loudon player to be signed. We'll just say it. Uh, I, we believe Ted Cudi Vietro will be signed with with the club here uh, sooner than later. I'm curious what the what the holdup is. Uh, but what is the max number of uh, roster spots right now for MLS? Do we know? Twenty eight or thirty, I think. Twenty eight or thirty. Well, that only leaves six players, and if Ted gets signed, that's five players that they're going to bring in here. I guess. I guess that's not crazy considering the number of players they drop, but that's there's some salary cap space there. There's some gam. There's a designated player spot, uh, and uh, hopefully, hopefully those players that were that were were moved were sort of replaced with impact. Players. Yeah, that's it's hope, right? it's thirty players. There there's some rules. You know, you have your your senior roster, which is slots like one through twenty. You have your supplemental roster, twenty one through twenty four. Uh, your 25 through 28 is your reserve minimum reserve roster, and there's different money implications. And then you have slots 29 and 30. You do not have to f- fill your full roster. And, and I would say, considering DC at this point just has the regular season and the Open Cup, not sure they will fill that roster. Though we'll see. Um, Aaron Am will will point to the man games missed and be like, "You're giving me all of the players that I possibly <laughs> fair have. enough. That's fair, what you're going to do. Fair enough." Uh, 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 yeah, go ahead. Sorry. No, I was just going to say, yeah. Uh, so hopefully we find out whether Ted gets signed, um, hopefully soon. Um, and also uh, we've got to talk about uh, – go ahead. Brendan hines also is in, in discussion to be brought back. He's not included on the 22. That's true. So that would be 23. Ted would be 24. So Six, six roster slots. Uh, and uh, Potentially six. And we'll see what happens. I mean, I, I think there's no guarantee uh, that Edison Flores is back. Um, there's no guarantee – there, there's some players that could be. There's also, again, to remember, there's going to be the expansion draft, um, and I think there could. Yeah, that's be... a good point. Take some of these players. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's a there's a certain de- uh, designated player from Peru. I think you guys would love. I, I think he would do well in Charlotte. I I don't think I don't see anybody. DC of uh, the 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 protection rules are much better and less or much better to the teams uh, that that exist that it, that exist uh, currently. Uh, you've also got way more teams as well than uh, the ten that are in NWSL. We'll get into the NWSL expansion yeah, draft here in a minute, but uh, but the uh, there's also more teams. DC while showed well finished you know middling. I, I I think I think there's a very good chance we we come away from this unscathed. Um, I, I really see that. I really do see that happen happening. Um, with considering considering once you get past our main roster. Um, you know, then I think you could see they could also go out and grab some of the guys that DC's already cut too. I think those players are like automatically unprotected. Um, so I mean, they they can go in and grab one, grab one of those. So I think like a Yordi Reina would be interesting, or a Joseph Mora. So I'm trying to see the number of players that you can protect. Uh, very quick. Oh, there's so many permutations. Never mind. It's not a very simple list. There are at least there are at least like six different categories. I was trying to look for a quick rule, but anyway, I was looking at um, you know, I'm looking at the players under under protection or under on under contract for this year. Uh, there's like ten people I really would be mad if they left. <laughs> yeah, maybe eleven. Uh, it's not, it, it, you know, I don't think it, I won't be I won't be destroyed uh, in a way that I would be, you know, for the NWSL champion Washington Spirit, uh, who have who have a roster that I think is deeper than the nine that they can protect. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And also, I mean, fewer teams. I mean, there are a lot more teams in MLS, and Charlotte has Charlotte's the pick of a lot of players. So I think I think that plays into it. I don't think DC. I'm trying to remember the last time we lost a player to an expansion draft. It's been a it's while. It's been a while. It's been it's been a real long time. Yeah, it has. Seattle. 
I'm, someone in the someone in the chat look that up. There's there, it's been it's been about that long. I think it's been about when that when uh, Seattle uh, came into the league. Yep, yep. But then uh, of course that the expansion draft will will get the protected list. 2 p.m. on December 13th, two days after MLS Cup, because that's what MLS is like. And then the expansion draft will be Tuesday, December 14th. Always crazy to me how quickly it's like. So basically, like someone from Portland is going to win the trophy and then might be like no longer playing for the team. That happened. That yeah. happened. Like that happened the next that day or the next day yeah. last last year. That's got to be year before. That's got to be crazy. Um, I Yeah. MLS is MLS. Is not, you don't get a chance to celebrate and you're already moving on to like, you know, uh, I got to figure out moving to Charlotte. I can't even. It was Greg Garza. Greg Garza after Atlanta won the cup was gone that day. They told him that day he was gone. Yeah. He was going to Cincinnati. And then his, and then he got injured, and, and he had to retire. So, <laughs> really, career career went precipitously downhill after that uh, after that championship. Yep. All right, I think that's going to do it. Uh, we can talk uh, some some outside DC DC related news. Kevin Paredes making the December camp, um, and will be playing presumably potentially playing in the January friendly. Uh, very excited for him. Uh, his he has he has been uh, his, his career is going up and up. Um, I think he has potential to. You know, maybe maybe make a World Cup roster if he shows well enough. I think it could happen. I think there's enough enough uh, space at that uh, at that wing back position. I think uh, he could be one of the young players that makes a side. I'd be curious to see if he makes the like a U20 roster coming up. I think he would still have a like, one year or so of eligibility for that. Yeah, I'll be curious to him to see the field. I think he's gonna have to see the field a lot before they put him on the before they put him on the World Cup roster. That, that's probably that's probably fair. That's probably fair. I just I, I think his defensive abilities. Are an asset we, that we love them. Yeah, we love them. We think that that's a big weak spot for the club, for the national team. So, uh, you know, for certain, if they're smart, they're going to get him in these games as 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 often as possible to see how he shows against that competition. Yeah, uh, and and we'll see what the Europe the Europe rumblings were a little loud and got a little louder. Um, I I think I think this summer uh, the team might look to see what they can do. Uh, cash in. Yeah, and see if they can if they can sell him. We'll see. We'll see. Um, but yeah, congratulations to Kevin. Good luck at U.S. Men's National Team Camp. We will be watching and rooting for you. Uh, last bit of MLS news before we begin. I think we do want to talk about the news that dropped today. MLS Next. Next Pro is what they're calling cool. it. MLS Next Pro has a very 1990s Mountain Dew vibe <laughs> uh, to it to me. Well, yeah, I mean, I kind of liked the – I didn't mind the name, I guess. I was like, okay, like you, you called your academy MLS Next. So obviously this is like the pro version – and it sticks with like the developmental mindset. The logo is terrible. Who like mm-hmm. who approved? <laughs> who said? Oh yeah, that's the logo we want for this league. Wow, that's really like it doesn't even. It's it it it's it's off in all the wrong ways. It's not even like unique that it looks cool. It just looks it just looks terrible. Um, and I hate it. Uh, but let but let's uh, jokes aside, John. What were your thoughts? Uh, there will be twenty teams. Uh, Loud United, of course, will have one more season in USL. Because they signed that contract, kind of surprised USL was like, you know what, just 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 get out. Yeah, what a dead rubber <laughs> season, right? Like I cannot imagine they're going to spend as little dollars oh, yeah. as humanly possible on that roster next year. The U18 is going to be all academy. Yeah, it's going to be all academy teams. And uh, if you thought if you thought that that <laughs> and I would say if you thought that team was hard to watch last year, they actually the stats belied their record, right? They 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 did create chances. They had you know, but next year Ryan Martin. Good Lord, buddy. Have a, you know, <laughs> good luck to it, you. It might surprise us. I, you never know. Yeah, <laughs> You never know, but yeah. Think, things that are weird. Uh, Rochester, New York FC mm-hmm. uh, joining joining the team. Obviously, the, 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 you know, the corpse, the reanimated corpse of the Rochester Rhinos uh, is, is this team. Uh, I don't know why they rebrand. Rochester Rhinos, I, you know, we, we talk about this till we're blue in the face. For a country that has so little soccer history, and also for for a time in which all things that are 80s and 90s are cool again, at least 90s, that you like throw this away. I think that was dumb and short sighted. Uh, I think Rochester NYFC is not going to resonate in 10 years. You're not going to yeah think about them. There will not be there will not be a T Floyd Thomas Floyd Rochester Rhinos aficionado. There will not be a Rochester a Rochester NYFC roster aficionado like there was for the previous team. Uh, you so can't that's weird and, that there's one independent team coming in the league. And you can never do six six degrees of Rochester Rhinos that's what I'm saying. with that's what I'm saying. with with Thomas Floyd. Uh but yeah, but no, I, I think if you do ask, I have heard or I believe I've I've heard that the and I've read 
that the Rochester Rhinos actually as an organization really made a lot of people upset in Rochester. Um, so people, the soccer community in Rochester actually does not have the same warm, fuzzy feeling that the, the rest of the American soccer community does. I've, I've heard that. Um, now, again, I think I, I agree with you, you know, there's so little history in this league. And I think you've shown when you go out and honor that history, earthquake sounders, um, rowdies, Tampa Bay rowdies, uh, yep. falling for nothing in the, in the USL championship. But when you sort of honor that legacy, I think you get a lot of benefit, um, from that and American soccer history needs that legacy. Um, so. I, I happened, I've watched, I don't know, victim of circumstance or just timing. I watched a lot of Tampa Bay home games mm-hmm. this year on ESPN plus really great atmosphere. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, as far I love, I love the fact that there are teams that sit in that second division that don't have long term aspirations of joining MLS and don't care. Yeah, and they still and they still are like fully invested in being as the best they can at that te- at that level. And Tampa Bay is one of those teams. So, on like you said, unfortunate that they got absolutely housed in the championship. Yeah, but other than that, and, and I think one positive thing you're seeing um, is you're seeing teams not fold but move down a division. Uh, New York, yep. New York City, North Carolina FC did that recently. Uh, Charlotte, uh, the Charlotte Independents, uh, which I, I, I still have questions <laughs> as to whether that will uh, whether that will continue, considering you've got an MLS team moving right next door. Uh, but uh, but they they've moved down to League One, so I think that's overall that's been a, one of the more positive things. My my big concern with like especially with a team like Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay did have uh, MLS aspirations. Uh, they actually want, were going to, if they got an MLS, but they were going to actually build that stadium up even more and turn it into. That was before Miami, though, wasn't it? It was before Miami. Yeah, I think before Orlando as well. But they were yeah, talked they, about they, as a as an MLS franchise. And in fact, many people thought the move to USL they made from the NASL was a way to get on MLS's good side and, and get a team. Um, and I think it's it is still really positive that they did not they did not fall. And I think we're seeing it with a lot of teams, uh, San Antonio. Uh, another team that I think I was worried about was going to go away once, you know, once Austin got a team and that deal was done, uh, I really thought that they were going to go away, but they're still around. Um, the other Austin team did fold, right? The Aztecs, they, they are. They the, I was Austin right? bold. No, I think Austin yeah. bold or I think they're still around. I'm pretty sure they folded for next year. I'm pretty positive. They did. Well, e- either way, e- either way, I-, I guess I'm just not understanding. So this is, this is going to be reserve league slash giving those players the academy kids opportunities, right? Is that the is that the general intention, or is it just full second teams, just like yeah? Uh, I, I think Griffin it's Yao getting getting twenty starts a year. I, I think it is. I mean, it's MLS bringing everything in house. It, it's a way to get something more into the TV deal, you know, for for whatever TV deal you're going to sign. Um, it's you know, I think it's a recognition. I, I think at the beginning there were a lot of uh, the USL two teams that took it very seriously. I think Rochester is an interesting addition, and the inclusion of independent teams is interesting. Um, I don't know. You know, right now I, I was kind of interested that we we aren't hearing more about certain teams maybe jumping ship from USL to this new league. Uh, it seems like right now a lot of owners are are you know a lot of the independent owners are happy with what USL is doing. Um, and- they should be. That is such that is such a better. I mean, we haven't seen it yet, but that's such a better product from the standpoint of competitiveness. This is going to be, I mean, like we just said, this is clearly not about. This is about having more inventory to sell for streaming. Mm-hmm. It's about controlling how much minutes and how the, how these players are, are 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 getting that are outside the 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 first team picture. But the competitiveness and the the atmosphere at the the atmosphere at these games is going to be garbage. Yeah. Like why, maybe like except it, Rochester again, your independent teams might still be, you know, so the one, the one team, it's, it's, <laughs> but I mean, the, the idea is that they get more in there. I, yeah. I don't know. Um, I, I don't know what, I don't know how, I think right now, if, if you're looking at it, the, the MLS two teams, what they did for USL was they put, put teams out there that were not going to fold the next day. They allowed, you know, the, at the time division two, which I think only had 10 teams to grow, they established that connection and that legitimacy, and, and they got a lot of owners in the in the door. Uh, some of them didn't last. Uh, Lansing Ignite is one I remember from from USL League One, and I, but I think it gave it gave it gave teams it put it put teams out there regardless of how it looked on TV, and it, and it gave matches. 
Uh, and I think, but I think it allowed sort of other teams to grow out of it. Um, you talk about teams that are, you talk about doing a lot better, but I, I think there is a chance that I think the USL has outgrown those second division teams. There are now more markets yes. um, and, and markets that's still around. I'm still surprised by the teams that are still around orange County. I didn't think that team would last. It's still there. It won the championship and it has mm-hmm. a pretty dedicated fan base. I was kind of surprised because I'm like, it's like an hour outside of LA. Like who's, and I think what's what we're seeing is we're seeing a lot of that localization come to soccer. It's actually pretty cool. Um, it is. It's really it's very, cool. very cool. Now, you, you're an evangelist for that, man. That's, that, that's, that's the best thing about, uh, you know, having seven us leagues or whatever, whatever the new number will be uh, when this is done. I, I thought orange County a while ago was basically just like a holding company yeah. for, for, for players who were about to move to Europe who weren't 18 yet. Uh, and instead turned into a viable and successful USL franchise. So yeah, I mean, good for them. I mean, my, again, my biggest fear was like when MLS shut the door, what was going to happen to these teams? Uh, these teams that some teams that came in and, you know, we talk about, uh, you know, we talk about Sacramento, uh, but a lot of teams are still sticking around and they're still even after MLS aspirations. So I, I think we'll, I think, I think we will see some, I think we'll see a team jump. We'll see at least a couple that might jump. Um, obviously this pro rel thing. I was actually worried that the kickers were going to do that. They were going to make that jump. Um, because they've always been a team that has played it safe and, and been a survivor. Um, so we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, it's going to be a fun time. Um, it, it's going to be an interesting time in American soccer. There are now three division three leagues now between MLS next <laughs> NISA and us and USL league one. So uh, fun. So dumb. Ted, tell me why I got the urge for us to do a spinoff podcast about lower league soccer in the United States. I don't think we have we wouldn't have the bandwidth for it. You'd love it. You'd be in your you'd be in your element in League One. I don't know why. Like I maybe yeah, we'll talk about this offline. But I, I think that there there's something. I think that the fact that there's like nine leagues now and there and that there are more teams than should be viable, like economically and also like continually to be competitive. Uh, that there there's something about it. There's something that's interesting about I'm it. I'm getting excited, man. We got the we got the we got the the Open Cup. I'm actually I'm, I'm going to be doing another summer in Lynchburg, and Lynchburg just qualified for the for the Open Cup. <laughs> you better be you, your butt better be there, man, for sure. I'm just see. I don't know like how the hosting works yet for that or anything, but uh, if they're hosting, we RFK Refugees correspondent will be will be on the scene with the. Uh, that was one of the first things we did. Was that might even been before the show? Is that you were at a uh, what what was that like Fredericksburg FC versus Richmond uh, Open Cup game, and you were oh, like live streaming? Oh it? yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was like yeah, it was like it was it was uh Chesterfield United versus like I think it was like some some team in RBFC? Charlotte. Yeah, it was, it was some team in Charlottesville owned by like a Greek restaurant. I forget what they were called, but yeah, that was awesome. that was fun, man. That that's that's the type of fun type of fun you get uh from some of those early. I love the Open Cup, man. I've been so mad like past two seasons we have not had it yet, so I'm very excited. Um <laughs> before we before we move on, like we we I think we teased something earlier on uh, earlier, I think the last couple of weeks, but we, and, and we, <laughs> to be honest with you, the last couple of weeks have been kind of crazy for everyone here associated with the show. We are still working on what that's going to be. I th- there, I think there will be changes next year mm-hmm. to like the way we want to, we, we want to cover things and the sort of the way things are uh, given to you and, 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 uh, and put out. But uh, I, I think there's some exciting things happening next year. I'm, we're pretty excited. I'm going to be in the stadium uh, every game next year. For DC United, which I was not last year, I will be not in the stadium every game for the Spirit uh, next year because I'm because I can't be at both of them because I will that will I will be sleeping on the couch or outside at that point <laughs> <if I> were, <laughs> third like a million home games a year. But uh, yeah, I I don't know. Just stay tuned. I guess uh, there's it's really exciting to see some. We've got a lot of discussions about where the show could go and what we could sort of focus on and ways we can expand without also having all of our hair fall out. So. Uh, you know, the season's going to, we're not going to do any more live shows for the rest of the year. And we're going to get into the spirit here in a second. Uh, and, and we'll have, you know, opportunity to really stretch our legs and figure out what that's going to be. But, uh, I don't know, just stay tuned. I think I think we're, we're 200 shows in we've, we've, you know, obviously gone a lot longer than we were anticipating. <laughs> I don't think, I think 200 shows was optimistic. I think for both of us at that point. So, uh, just get excited. I think something, I think something interesting is going to happen next year. Yep. I think we're, we're, we're constantly trying to get the show to grow and it's been awesome that you guys want to, want to be out here supporting it. Let's, uh, let's shift a little gears. Let's talk spirit. Uh, this is less, less good news because the, uh, NWSL expansion draft, uh, pities nobody and gobbles everything. Uh, let's start with, so a lot of moves have been happening. A lot of interesting moves. 
Um, th- uh, I think now it's basically learned that basically uh, you can you can get protection for as little or as much as you want from the expansion draft. You can even choose position, which I really want to. I really want to know how that's decided. I, I that has to be. You can write any contract. You can write a contract to say anything. Yeah, and this is what these all are. These are all micro contracts. So, I, I, yeah, I think that was funny. I have to, I have to believe I have to believe that they had they had a list of players. They were like this and they were all mostly forwards. But they're like, look, just don't we don't want you taking these players. And then they don't want to say which ones. So they say like, oh, forwards, you know, Maybe. and I think that's that has to be I, like, how do you tell like soccer is not a sport. It's not like a it's not like basketball or hockey or any other sport where there's defined positions. I mean, is is Megan Rapino a midfielder or is she a forward? She's an outside player. She can play in the midfield, though. Is Rose Lavelle a forward or a midfielder? They're all forwards. <laughs> that, that's the, any, any of their good players are forwards. That's Probably. I, I said there had to be a list. There had to be a list game. But let's talk about, um, I think... I think the the spirit, and I actually read this wrong initially, and I think I tweeted, "Oh man, well, hey, they got some out of it, and they got some protect." No, man, they got uh, they got fleeced, they got fleeced. Which which one? Uh, San Diego Wave. They got okay. Yeah, they yeah, got yeah, fleeced. Yeah. Uh, they were no, the Angel City. They did not get fleeced. But go ahead. Talk. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about that so trade. The, I have I have it up in front of me here. So they traded uh, Tiki McGrady. Uh, a uh, the I think it was uh, what was it? Um, Reigns An international spot, international next spot year. and Reigns first yeah. round pick, which I think they had. Yeah. Uh, yep. from a trade. So uh, the, the Spirit actually do not have a tr- pick, I think, until the third round, I want to say. Correct. Yep. Correct. They've got two picks, and they're both end of end of third and end of fourth round. So they will be quiet, unless they trade up, which I think last year, I think we, they were in a similar situation. I think maybe they had a second round pick, and they traded up in the draft. So I don't think you'll do that this time. I think you'll be... You, you, you. This was this was about preservation of, of players, and it, it really stinks to lose Tegan McGrady. It really does. Not, not. I, I, you know, and I think we, we sort of talked about this. I, I, I do, I do think for all that it is bad, I, I do think if you look at, and also the downside here is that uh, the cost of protection has decreased uh, as this has gone along. I think people are teams are now getting protection for a lot less than mm-hmm. uh, the spirit originally gave up. But at this time, I think they were the. There have been other trades like half of the Chicago Red Stars roster uh, leaving. Uh, there, there have been other ones that we can we can get through them later, but. Uh, I think overall, if you look at what they were trying to protect, this is still a young team. This is not a team where the spirit are saying, like, we got to just protect our names for for ticket value or whatever. Like, they're an overall very young roster, and they don't need a lot of additions from a draft side, draft pick perspective. They really just want to return this roster with another year and run it back. Uh, I, I got it's in our it's it's hard to argue with that being a potential recipe for success. It was expensive. In this case, uh, it was less expensive. They they were able to buy off Angel City uh, by sending a player named Mary Alice Vignola. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they're actually getting money back in that. And they're getting protected. And they get protection from uh, allocated players. So none of the allocated players, um, which is Emily Sonnet, Kelly O'Hara, and, uh, Andy Sullivan. and Andy Sullivan, they will not be selected by Angel City. They can still select anyone outside of the nine protected. Uh, which the the list for that will be coming out, I believe, four days. Uh, that is a player that I didn't know we even had because it was a discovery player signing. It was sort of it's sort of like when MLS clubs uh, uh, s- like trade discovery rights of a player. <laughs> That's sort of what happened here. So great trade, Ben. That was a good one. That cost us nothing from my perspective to to get to make sure that, that none of our national team players. So they they have locked in for sure. Their allocated players are not going anywhere. They know that beyond that. Plus nine are not going anywhere uh, because they, they're only uh, going to lose one player. They yeah. only have a chance, and they probably will lose one player. I guarantee. Or the the price from the yeah you'll definitely and, win. And you talk about the price has gone down. I think that is that is very clearly um, uh, that, that that that's how good your roster is. It increases the price at which you get to stave off a team from selecting one of your players. And when you're the team that played as well as they did, had players step up. Uh, play really well. That price becomes very expensive to be completely excluded from the from the from the expansion draft. I think that's what we saw here. Uh, and this is a young team. Any one of these players, San Diego Wave w- or uh, or Angel City FC would love to have on their team because it's a young team. As a players, you bring someone in like Tegan McGrady, you're having her for the next three four years. You know, as 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 one of your stalwart midfielders. So I mean that's the that's the nature. When you have a team, we have some older players. 
yeah, maybe you're interested, um, but you know, it's it's certainly not much. And I think I think that's why the price was so high for the spirit, particularly to be completely excluded. Now, for the allocated players, I think it was a little cheaper because I think obviously Spirit are going to protect Andy Sullivan. That that was a given. Uh, she she's the basically she is the up and coming starter. Kelly O'Hara, Emily Sonnet, yeah, maybe you want maybe a team like Angel City or or uh, or San Diego Wave would want one of those players, but I I don't know if you really want them sort of building your your base so to speak. So I think it was a lot cheaper to get them excluded. And Angel City can still go in and select a player that they think maybe can be a can be a base builder on their team. Um, is it nine beyond? Is it nine plus allocated or allocated inclusive? Nine? I think it's allocated inclusive of the nine. That's the way I understood it. So yeah, I'm, I'm looking through that. What, let's do a little quick little roster roster uh, thinking here. Really. Yeah, uh, I think that I think that's a, a useful exercise. Aubrey Bledsoe needs to be protected, mm-hmm. obviously. Trinity Rodman will be protected. Sam Stop is one I was just thinking about here as a as a as a challenge. She is a she is an excellent player. She is uh, she she had had a fantastic year. She's from San Diego. I wonder if that's a data point that we should be thinking about. Who, who, maybe not. Maybe so. Who's that? Andy Sullivan or no? Sam Stop. Oh, Sam Stop. Okay. Yep. So let's put that one. Put that one in the middle. Kelly O'Hara protected. Emily Sana protected. Uh, Ta- Sarah Takarada probably not protected. She didn't really feature mm-hmm. this much this year, but I don't. I think they would be fine with leaving her, losing her. Avery Collins was injured all year. They'll leave her. They'll leave her protected. Ashley Sanchez will be protected. Jordan DiBiase, good bet to be protected. Should be protected. Andy Sullivan protected. Bailey Feist probably will not be protected coming off an ACL injury. I will, I will imagine based on the based on sort of the roster rules that they've that they're they're at. By the way, so it's it's nine players, and of the nine players protected, each club can only protect one U.S. allocated player. Oh, okay. All right. So that well, but we protected that in the. Uh... Yep. So yeah, no, yeah, all the those players are staying there. So it's nine players. So it's like uh, Ashley Hatch, Trinity Rodman. Um, Ashley Sanchez, top three. Um, I think you, Paige Nielsen. Do you do you do you, do you keep I her? Think her? I think I think you make do. Sure you're on the list. I think you do. She's she, yeah. You gotta. Julia Rotter has become more important to this team with Tegan McGrady trade. Yeah. So I think they've got it. They've got to keep her. Kumi Yokoyama had a pretty down year. I think uh, you probably put them on the on the list for a selection. Devin Kerr put him on the list. Put her on the list. Uh, you know, no one no one plays where Aubrey plays. <laughs> Uh, Dorian Bailey would be an interesting one. Yeah, I think that's that's a, that's a. I think if you had a bigger list, you'd make sure to keep her. Mariana Speckmeyer, uh, on the you could have her up there. Anna Halfordy, please do not select Anna Halfordy, San Diego. <laughs> Leave me alone. Do not do not do this. I so, would be very upset if you do this. So so I mean, really, you can kind of. I mean, so we start. I, I said Trinity Robin, Ashley Sanchez, Ashley ha- uh, uh, Ashley Hatch, um, Aubrey Bledsoe. Aubrey Bledsoe. So that's four. Four. Um, and then maybe, so yeah, Julie Rotter five, I think Julie Rotter five. Um, then you have, you have, you still have four more and I think you've got some, uh, Terry Mickey own, I think would be six. I think you would want to hold yep. on to her. Um, and then please. And then Alfredy, please. So Tori Houston. Do you, do you, do you protect no. her? Yeah. You do not, you don't protect a, a, a player. Uh, no, not with I, a Achilles injury. I think you've got, um, I think you, are you talk about, I think, I think, oh boy. Yeah. This gets hard. <laughs> yeah. This yeah is the, it's, it's, the, it's, it's these last two spots that you got to, so Jordan DiBias, do you protect Dorian Bailey? I think you got to yeah. based on the way she played. So that gets you to eight. So now you are not protecting Sam Staub. You're not protecting Jordan DiBiase. You're not protecting Bailey Feist. You're not protecting Paige Nielsen. Of players that of players that played a lot or Tori. I think Paige Nielsen. I think you protect Paige Nielsen. I, I and then leave and then leave open uh, DiBiase, Bailey Feist, Sayori Takarada. I think that's I think that's probably yeah. Right. I think I think you're looking at that list. It's I'm looking at players like that are ir- that you can't really replace in this team, and I, I think th- those are my nine. I'd be curious to see if anybody in the chat has any disagreement or anybody in the comment D- section has any disagreement. Doug thinks they expose page and, and protects Halfordy. I think Halfordy definitely is protected. Yeah. Uh, I, th- I think she played well under Richie and under Chris. So that's, although she did her, her playing time definitely did decrease once the national team players came mm-hmm. back, but I think that she showed so well. And she also got an opportunity to go into the midfield a little bit more after that. She's, she's, a, she's gotta be a keeper. It's really, to me, it's, it's really about the, DiBiase, 
uh, who was injured with a hip, with, had a hip injury the entire year. So I maybe you leave her exposed, unfortunately. Dorian Bailey and Sam Stott. Those are the sort of the tweeners for me. And one, I think you lose one of them probably is what's going to happen because they're all pretty good players. I would, of them, I think that Dorian Bailey was probably the the quietest key contributor for the Spirit this year. Mm-hmm. So it would really hurt them to lose her. I don't think there's another player uh, that that immediately comes in and, and fills that role. Andy obviously does it, but as far as like a pure out-and-out linking defensive midfielder, she did very, very well this year and had a lot of minutes. Um, so we'll see that this it's a good promise to have. This is a deep roster. It, it's a championship winning roster. It's young roster. It's all good stuff. Yeah. They, they gave up a lot, but I think they have um, in some trades. I think it was, it, it's, it's, it's well spent in the fact that I think we're, you know, we're only going to lose one player now losing Tegan Brigady again is tough. So technically we've lost two players um, and we had to give up a lot of, a lot of potential, but this team has a lot of a p- potential and I think it's going to be on Olsen and Chris Ward to fill out replacements and keep it going. Um, I think, you, I think you got to still look to, to get better and improve because the league itself is going to get better um, and going to improve. So, and then, and then next year you're looking to just to, to wrap up the, the roster conversation about the spirit. You've got players that have an opportunity to step up next year. Mm-hmm. Uh, Karina Rodriguez, uh, now has been called up by the Mexican national team every yeah. time since since she's moved to the club. Does she feature more? I think she only played once or twice and always in sort of late minutes. Uh, Mariana Speckmeyer, who's playing for the Venezuelan national team, also very limited minutes. I believe she played one once or twice at at, uh, at Segra and sort of a uh, that sort of. And you got a bunch of players coming back from season injury, season long injuries. Avery Collins, sort of less less of a feature than Jordan DiBiase, who was a major contributor. And obvious, and you know the player that you and I and, and a lot of other players looked at, or, or people looked at to have a huge last year, Bailey Feist, is an impact player right mm-hmm. there. She she was Ashley Sanchez before Ashley Sanchez uh, with this team. So, and, and this team theoretically has money, and depending on the ownership situation, which we still don't know. And I think we'll have a conversation about that probably before the end of the year. We're not doing more live shows, but we might we might tape, particularly if something relevant happens. Um, this this club could conceivably still add players. That was the conversation beforehand, uh, earlier on in the year, uh, when Richie was still here, was talking about making a major signing in the summer. So there's there was an appetite to do that. The the ownership situation is is as uh, murky as possible, so we don't necessarily know what that's going to be. But you would assume any interested party taking over right now will want to put their stamp on the club. Yeah, on the NWSL champion side, they're going to want to do something. Uh, to prove that they're that they're serious about taking it to the next level. So uh, the you know we'll know on the tenth sort of what the game plan is from the spirits perspective. Ben Olson, I guess, is the guy doing this. Uh, so we'll we'll see what Ben has in mind for uh, for the club for uh, this this expansion. Yeah, period. go check out uh, go check out you got Liga MX uh, Feminel going on uh, right now. They're in the playoffs, so a lot of fun. And I think you talk about who's left. You talk, do we know who's left? I, I do. I had the list up. Uh, it is uh, Atlas. Oh, At- Atlas just beat Santos Laguna. So Atlas moves on. Then we have uh, Chivas and America are playing right now. Zero zero. Oh, wow. They got all the big clubs yeah. to the, to the if, end there. If you don't watch the league MX, uh, Tigres is basically the dominant. They are five, nothing up on aggregate right now against Cruz Azul uh, and Monterey and club Tijuana play, uh, play a 10. I, I, I'm more going to be watching the, I guess that, cause I want to see which there's going to be a team. Uh, Tigres have dominated, dominated the women's side of in Mexican soccer. They have, uh, they have been the dominant force. Uh, and I think America has come the closest to their coaching situation. They have a coach who uh, was fired uh, for abuse for abuse in uh, in the NWSL, which is another story. Uh, but but uh, you know I, I I think I think Mexico is going to be an interesting story to watch on the women's side because you have the U.S. and Canada that have been dominant for for years. Uh, and Mexico has made a World Cup in the past. They made the I think not the last World Cup, but the World Cup before. They did not make it this time around. Uh, but they are they are a a country that is. Uh, investing in the women's side of the game, and they're getting and, and they are getting better. They're they're becoming becoming a better team. I think they actually qualified once and they beat the U.S. Uh, to qualify for for the one of the World Cups. Um, so yeah, fun times, fun times. I think that that I think that about sinks it here. There's going to be obviously a lot of news on the NWL I mean, obviously, we didn't even get into all the trades that have occurred uh, in the last couple. Gotham FC is just, I think, yeah, uh, I think doing a line change. What just dropped before the show, Alex Morgan was just traded from Orlando to uh, San Diego. I don't know if you saw that. 
<laughs> I did not see that. <laughs> that just dropped. Wow. So yeah, there's uh, there are a lot of teams. Chicago is one of those teams that is that is blowing it up. I think maybe related to what's going on. Uh, Orlando, I think, is also another team uh, that is also kind of blowing it up. Basically, uh, there there are a lot of teams that I think are are maybe. I think there are a lot of teams that are looking at what the spirit did and said, "We got this all wrong." Like we need to go young. Like we need to go and bring in the spirit have really, I think changed a lot of what teams are trying to do in the NWSL. And I've seen it with Chicago and I've seen now with Orlando as well. They're like, Hey, let's blow this up and we can go out and we can find players, you know, from the, from the drafts, you know, young players, and we can bring in young talent. They're not going to be where they're not going to have the weight of the U S women's national team. So we get more games out of them. We get more opportunities. That's, that's that part's good. That's a good. Point. Yeah, and and you know, hey, we can go out and win a championship. You don't need the Megan Rapinos or the or the Alex Morgans of the world. I I think I think the Spirit are going to start a shift in in how NWSL. Not a complete shift. I think there'll still be a need for teams that that want to have those star players. Uh, but I think you're going to see the beginnings of of maybe a uh, other teams thinking of different ways they can maybe win in this league. And I think the Spirit did show that this year. To, to the spirit's benefit, if other teams want to do this, that's not a one-year process. Mm-hmm. So uh, that, make, that oh, yeah. makes repeating much more likely next year. Portland, obviously, is is still – they're reloaded. They're ready to rock for, for next year. I don't think that'll be a problem. Uh, North Carolina sort of disbanding at this mm-hmm. moment. Orlando, as you just said, I, I believe Ashton Harris and Ali Krieger either at already yeah, Gotham. Uh, in Gotham. Yeah. Or? Gotham's going to be good next year, I think. that That's a big pickup for them, especially Ashley Ashlyn Harris. Uh, big pickup, and, they, and they're gonna, they're gonna. Someone else. They lost Kayla. They lost Kayla Sheridan in the expansion draft, or like in 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 like previous. Yeah, I believe that, right? so. Yeah, that's why they had. A, they needed a goalie. So I think what we should do, honestly, Ted, is before the end of the year, do like an NWSL move, like end of year roster move mm-hmm. wrap up. Maybe as like a good. Uh, if if anyone in the comments is interested in that, that just gives us an opportunity. I think there will be more movement in the NWSL than there will be in MLS here before the end of the year. So that's something. Then Doug points out before we end the show. Doug points out something that I just got extremely excited about is that the spirit will participate in the women's Ooh, ICC next year. That's cool. Which on the men's side is garbage. Who cares? But on the women's I mean, side, this is the closest thing we have to an open cup or a way to measure yourself against an external marking point. And that is exciting to me. That's and cool. I hope that I hope, I hope Chris Ward or whoever is the, and hopefully it is Chris Ward. We didn't talk about this. He is, uh, he is rumored to be in negotiations for the, uh, for the full job, <laughs> which he should get. Uh, but I hope if it is him or whoever it is, takes that seriously because I want to win that bad. I will buy tickets to every one of those games. Yeah, and I will that win. that sounds like a fun fun trophy. Um, and and yeah, uh, that I I just got all excited, man. I didn't, I can't even think about that. I, I didn't even I, thank you, Doug. Yeah. I forgot about it too. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. I'm 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 excited about that. And uh, we're gonna have a while before we see Emma. I think we see DC. I think uh, I mean DC could do well and play. I think the next League's Cup or is the next next year the League's Cup is when they're doing the big thing, right? The the whole like month off They'll shut down. The yeah. Season. Shut down the season month yeah. thing. So, but that's going to be fun. A lot of, a lot of fun international soccer. Hey, uh, MLS and some buy the English league MX rights. G- give, give yeah. the games in English. Give some context. I, I might do a whole, I'm thinking like a whole like side podcast about, you know, talking about that and why, why, why that doesn't happen. Um, Cause I feel like it should. All right, folks. I think that's gonna, I think we, anything else we want to drop before we, before we close it out. No, thank you for 200 episodes, Ted. And Brian, producer Brian, I uh, obviously we couldn't do it without any one of us. So I appreciate you sticking with us uh, and and making sure that this show stays on the rat through through life's chaos. I know that, I know that it's, it's it's a hard week to week to get this show out, mm-hmm. and we've done it. And I you know thank you. Man. Yep. And, 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 and silent producer Brian, and thank you. Too. Drop those prime subs. I, I think we've had some people that have that have dropped off on the on the prime sub thing. So it's free, guys. Just drop it in there. Connect your prime account. You can do it for free. You don't it doesn't cost you a thing and it gives us it gives us some love and it gives us some money. So do it. All right, folks. I think that's gonna do it. Thanks so much guys for joining us. Uh, we will uh, catch you guys uh, sometime down the road. We'll we'll see how the news drops. Vamos. Vamos.